Hello dear learners, in this online session, we will see the precipitation titration. So, as you know, the precipitation titration, okay, so here there is a need to study about solubility product and solubility of precipitates. Now, what is precipitates, what is solubility product and what is solubility of precipitates that you will get clear after listening this video. So, what is precipitation titration? It is a special type of titrimetric procedure that involves the formation of precipitates during the course of titration. See, as you know, the name of precipitation titration means what? Here, we will get the precipitate after titration. That's why the name is precipitation titration. So, here what happened? How or when you will get precipitate first? So, the titrant react with the analyte forming an insoluble material. You can say this insoluble material is a precipitate. And the titration continues till the very last amount of analyte is consumed. Means here you can find the difference between equilibrium point and end point. Now what is equilibrium point and what is end point? So you can say when your titrant okay, will consume the analyte, okay, the total amount of analyte. At that time you can say your titrant and your analyte are in a equilibrium. Now, what happened when you will get an end point or when you will get a precipitate or a color change? Then, the, when the first drop of titrant in excess, now what is in excess? Because now already they are in an equilibrium. If you are adding, okay, now from burette, if you are adding the drop of a titrant in your conical flask, then obviously what will happen? You can say there will be a color change and at that time you can say you are getting your end point okay so here in this kind of titration it's a precipitation titration you will get a precipitate or you can say a color change in your precipitates this is the end point of precipitation titration now see a reaction must satisfy this conditions means your reaction must satisfy some conditions okay so first thing is that your precipitate must be practically insoluble obviously your precipitate must be practically insoluble your precipitate must be rapid okay it will be a fast process your precipitate should possible to detect means you can detect the equivalent point okay from the titration this is the first requirement whatever precipitate you are getting it should be practically insoluble that's why only okay this is the point where you can find the end point of your precipitation titration so obviously it should be practically insoluble then method based on precipitation of insoluble silver is known as argentometry now see here if we are titrating the silver okay so this method is known as argentometry then if we are titrating or if we are identifying the amount of the halogen so it can be determined by precipitation as a mercurous salt you can say in the form of hgcl2 okay so mercury chloride and it is known as mercurometry so this is the different different name as per the analyte okay as per which analyte you are using or which analyte okay, you are going to determine now see quantitative precipitation can be used for volumetric determination say for example silver nitrate when silver nitrate is react with nacl okay, what happened you will find agcl as a precipitate and sodium nitrate okay as a product another product so here your ag is react with Cl so you are getting the precipitate of AgCl so from that you can either find the amount of silver or you can find the amount of chloride present in your analyte now see 
the titration involves the precipitation are called precipitation titration already we have seen there are two type of titration you can say uh, some titration are being carried out uh, by direct method and some can carried out by indirect method now we will see what is the solubility product so what is solubility product so product of molar concentration of ions that raised to the power equal to its stoichiometric coefficient that presents in a ionic equation in a saturated solution at a fixed temperature is called solubility product and this solubility product is denoted by ksp sp means a solubility product and k means equilibrium constant okay now see uh, what is the solubility product with example so here you can see the example of uh, agcl okay first uh, you can see here s means solid it is present in a solid form you can say undissolved solid so it is here you can find equilibrium this is a dissolved undissociated molecule after that it will get dissociated and you can see over here this agcl is get dissociated into two product that is ag plus and cl minus okay this is your ionic product and agcl this is you can say your solubility product so now see solubility product what is it actually so it is a product of the concentration of ions in the saturated solution of sparingly soluble salt as agcl okay this is your solubility product is constant okay your solubility product should be constant at a given temperature okay it will not get solubilized you can say and that we will see uh, we will see different different factors affecting the precipitate when it will get solubilized now see the overall equilibrium if we describe in detail the above example then you can see over here here your agcl is present in a solution okay so you are getting this two okay after dissociation where ag plus and cl minus represent what the ionic concentration and this agcl is represent your solubility product so k equilibrium constant if we are going to find the equilibrium constant from this reaction we can write it like ag plus and cl minus divided by agcl so i can multiply this to i can write like k equilibrium into this agcl is equal to ag plus cl minus so what is k equilibrium is your k that is k is denoted by k agcl is your solubility product you can see over here so i have already written like sp it's your solubility product here you can see it's a agcl so you can write sp means solubility product so this ksp is equal to ag plus cl minus so this is your solubility constant product now why there is a need to find or to understand the concept of solubility product so when the ionic product exceed the solubility product the solution is super saturated okay you can see over here what happen when your ionic product is higher than your solubility product then your solution should be you can say it is a super saturated and precipitation will occur in this condition only you will find a precipitate you will get a precipitate in other condition you will not get a precipitate say for example when the ionic product is less than the solubility product the solution is unsaturated obviously okay if there is no dissociation here see if there is no dissociation there is no precipitate okay so if there is a dissociation there should be a precipitate obviously you can understand it so in quantitative analysis 
excess precipitating agent is always employed to ensure a complete precipitation. Now, what is complete precipitation? You can say, if say for example, if I take example of a barium chloride, okay, I am adding a sulfuric acid in a barium chloride. Then, if I am adding excess sulfuric acid in a solution of barium chloride, then you will find a precipitate of barium sulfate. And here you will find the complete precipitation because of excess amount of sulfuric acid. Now see, depending upon the values of ionic product, now see this ionic product is denoted by Q. So depending upon the value of ionic product, the solution can be classified into three different categories. So first is when Q is equal to KSP means here what happened your ionic product is equal to your solubility product. So you can say your solution is just a saturated. So there will be a no precipitation. When your ionic product is higher than your solubility product. You can say your solution is super saturated already we have seen and precipitation takes place. Then if you say your solubility product is less than your ionic product, then your solution is unsaturated and more of the solute can dissolve. Obviously, if your solubility product is high, okay, then your precipitate will get dissolved. Okay, there will be no chance to get precipitate. So no precipitation takes place at this condition. So when you will get a precipitate, then when and when only your only product is higher than your solubility product. At that time only you will get the precipitate. So this is why we have studied the concept of solubility product. Now we will see the different factors that affect on the solubility of a precipitate. So here, first is the effect of acid upon solubility of a precipitate. So, sparingly soluble salt of a strong acid. Okay, so the effect of the addition of acid will similar to that of any other electrolyte. Okay, but if the sparingly soluble salt of weak acid will have solvent effect upon it means what if you will add a weak acid okay if you will add a weak if you will add a weak acid on a precipitate then what happen you will find a solvent effect and if you will add a strong acid then you will get a more precipitate okay you will get a more precipitate so upon addition of weak acid you can find your solubilized product of your precipitate and if you will add a strong acid you can find that your precipitate precipitate get increases now see the effect of temperature upon solubility of precipitate so if the solubility of precipitate okay, in quantitative analysis what happened this is very obvious. If you uh, heat your solution, then what happened? Okay, your solubility is increases. Okay, your precipitate will get dissolved. Where, over possible, it is advantageous to filter. Okay, so don't heat your solution. You just filter your solution. Okay, when it is hot and rate of filtration is increased. And solubility of foreign substance thus rendering the remove from precipitate okay that is more complete so if you will increase the temperature there is a chance that your precipitate will get dissolved now solubility of precipitate we will see the effect of solvent upon solubility of precipitate so what happened see the solubility of most inorganic compound is reduced by addition of organic solvent okay if you will add the organic solvent like methane ethanol propanol acetone on a precipitate of your insoluble product or you can say your inorganic compound then what happened the solubility will get reduced means 
your precipitate will stay as it is okay so addition of 20 percent ethanol that renders the solubility this is one example i have taken here that if you will add 20 percent ethanol on a lead sulfate then what happened there will be a separation of that compound means you will get a precipitate similarly calcium sulfate separates quantitatively from 50 percent ethanol okay so what happened if you will add the organic solvent then you can rise the precipitation or you may get a separate product also so these are the effect of some factors on your solubility of precipitate now see how can we calculate the solubility product so see there are two things if you have your solubility of any compound then you can find ksp means solubility product from that and if you have ksp then you can find this one solubility of that particular compound this is a vice versa say for example here your problem is calculate the ksp value means solubility product of barium sulfate which has a solubility of 3.9 into 10 raised to 5 minus 5 mole per liter at 25 degree centigrade temperature so obviously we are going to write the equation okay this baso4 in a solid then okay here there is a dissociation product ba plus 2 so4 to minus so if we are going to find the ksp value you can see here ksp is equal to s into s so s square okay it's a solubility so just write a solubility of this 3.9 okay solubility of vso4 is this so we can say this is same for pa plus 2 and it is same for so4 to minus also okay because as per the stoichiometry your numbers are same so you can write s square so this is the solubility product so if we want to find the solubility from solubility product what we can do we can go for just under root okay means we can take under root of that particular value now see uh, now solubility and solubility product so here we are finding the solubility from given solubility product we can say the ksp so here the ksp is given and you have to find the solubility so how can you find it so if s is the solubility of agcl then ag plus equal to we can write as cl minus we can write again as so what is ksp ksp is equal to s into s so what do you mean by s if you want to find s is equal to under root ksp okay so ksp is given so we can find this value over here under root by taking under root of this value so whatever answer we are getting is the solubility of the particular product and the unit of solubility is mole per liter so this is how we can find the solubility from given ksp value and we can find a ksp value from given solubility now see the types of methods for endpoint detection means in a precipitation titration to detect the end point of analyte okay there are three methods mohr's method volhart's method and fajan's method this all methods i will discuss in a different different part okay in next upcoming video so thank you dear learners for watching this video we will discuss the methods for precipitation titration in the next video.